Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate here, and in this video I'm going to be doing a complete iOS 5 overview, so you'll know what to expect when you get your hands on it. So we're going to start off by going over the more prominent features and then working our way down. So in iOS 5, when you bring your device home for the first time from the Apple Store, you're no longer going to be greeted with that connects to iTunes screen. Now you'll be able to set up your device right then and there using the personal setup feature. So let's go ahead and awake my iPhone, and we'll go through that process. So the first thing you can do is select your language. So I've selected English. You can select your country. Then you can enable location services. And you'll be able to in, um, set up your device using a Wi-Fi network. And then it's going to go ahead and activate my device. Next, you can choose to set up your iPhone, restore from an iCloud backup, or restore from iTunes. Let's just go ahead and set it up as a new device. Now I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my Apple ID. Alright, so once you've entered in your Apple ID, you'll be able to agree to the terms and conditions. Alright, next you'll be able to set up your Apple ID with iCloud. You can turn on the Find My iPhone service. and you can automatically send your diagnostics and usage to Apple. And that's the last step, so now we're ready to get into the iOS 5 itself. So Apple has added some other features as well to make your iOS devices PC free. The first is over-the-air software updates. You can check for a software update by heading into settings, going into general, and you'll see the software update tab here. And you'll see it says that my software is up to date at this point. Now what's great about this is whenever Apple pushes out an update, you'll be able to do it right on the device. You'll be able to either download it over, over a Wi-Fi or a 3G connection, and it will install it and everything right on the device. So you don't have to use iTunes, making it PC free. Apple has also added the ability to back up your device with iCloud. So you'll be able to head into the iCloud tab, go into storage and backup. You'll be able to turn on backups automatically, so backups will automatically be made for your device whenever it's plugged in and it's connected to a Wi-Fi network. So you don't have to use iTunes to back up all your data. It would automatically be backed up to the cloud, so if you ever have to restore your device and use the personal setup again, when we saw the uh, use the iCloud backup feature, you'll be able to get all your content back onto your device. Now many of you out there still may be interested in using iTunes to manage your music and apps. If that's the case, you'll be able to do so over Wi-Fi in iOS 5. So all you have to do is head into Settings, and you're going to notice the iTunes Wi-Fi Sync tab under General. Select it, and you're going to see that my iMac has been enabled to use this feature. All you have to do is select the Sync Now button, and the process will begin in iTunes. And it looks like it's finished. The next prominent feature in iOS 5 is Notification Center. Notification Center can be accessed by swiping down from the top of your device's screen. And the first thing you'll probably notice here are these two widgets. This first one is a stock widget, and you can simply swipe through it to take a look at the different stocks. And it, the second one is a weather widget, so it will give you your current weather conditions, and you can also take a look at a six-day forecast. If you select either of these widgets, it will bring you into the app that they came from. So to show you how notifications have changed in iOS 5, let me go ahead and send myself a text message. So you'll notice this new notification right up here. This is the banner sort of um, alert that Apple is implementing in iOS 5. It's not obtrusive because it will just appear at the top of your device and simply go away if you choose to do nothing. It's not like in iOS 4 where you would either have to close or reply to the application right then and there. So if you want to access that notification, then open up Notification Center and you'll see it there. Select it and it'll bring you right into the app. Now let me show you how lock screen notifications work. So if I send myself another text message, you'll see that this notification has been brought to the lock screen. And if I select the icon, I can simply slide to reply. Now let me show you how multiple notifications appear in the lock screen. You'll see the first one came in, and there's the second one. So it switches to this grid sort of uh, layout here, so they just stack up on top of each other, and you can select either of them, and it will bring you right into messages. So along with Notification Center, Apple's bringing you some nice customization with it. So if you go ahead into Notifications, You'll be able to sort the way you want the apps to appear, so manually or by time. You can choose to remove something from Notification Center if you don't want it. So if I want to remove the weather widget, I can select it and just turn it off. 
The next thing you can do is customize how notifications will work for each individual app. So you can have as few as one recent item or as many as 10. You can change the alert style so you can either choose to have none, the banner, which is the way that I just showed you, or the alert, which is the iOS 4 sort of notification. You can also choose to have the badge icon appear or uh, also have it uh, not appear in the lock screen. So that is Notification Center in iOS 5. So the next feature we're going to talk about in iOS 5 deals with the camera and photo applications. So now you'll have quick access to the camera right from the lock screen. All you have to do is simply double tap the home button and select the camera icon and it will bring you right into it. Next, Apple is adding the ability to turn on a grid so you can enable this uh, in options. So if you want to turn it off, you can. Next, Apple is allowing you to take the photo by selecting the volume up button. And lastly, you can also now lock the auto fo auto focus and auto exposure. All you have to do is select the screen and hold down. You'll see the little square icon um, bounce, and you'll see it does say uh, auto focus and auto exposure locked down there at the bottom. So no matter where I move my camera, that it will stay locked in that position. So if you want to access your camera roll, you can simply swipe, and it will bring it right here for you. And you can head back to the camera by selecting this little camera icon here, or you can simply just swipe back. So now let's talk about editing photos. So we'll open up the photo app. And here's a photo that I recently took. You can edit your photo by selecting edit in the top right hand corner. And this first one here will allow you to rotate the photo. You can auto enhance the photo. There is red eye reduction. And there's also the ability to crop the photo. So you can change the dimensions of it or constrain it to these different dimensions. And when you're done, you can select crop. So if you want to keep it this way, you can simply select save, or if you messed up or something, you'll just click cancel, and it will revert back to the original photo for you. So those are the updates to the camera and photo apps. The next thing we're going to talk about is Twitter integration. So in iOS 5, Apple has integrated Twitter right into the operating system. So in settings, you're going to notice this new Twitter pane right here. And you can simply install the Twitter application right from here, and then enter in your account information. So what you'll be able to do with this is be able to share various things. So let's open up Safari here. And let's say I want to tweet this web page. You can select Tweet from the Options menu. And it will bring it up. So you'll see a preview of the web page here. You can type in some text. And if you want to, you can add location information as well. You can also do this then for uh, photos. Let's open up Photos here. And let's say I want to tweet this photo. Select Tweet again. So you'll see the photo there, and you can also uh, enter text and add a location. And last but not least, you can also do this for YouTube videos. So we'll just select one of these here. You select share the video, and then tweet, and you'll be able to do the same thing. So that's Twitter. So for this next part, I've brought in my iPad in order to demo the iMessaging system that's been built into iOS 5. What's great about this is if you're an iPad or iPod Touch owner, you are now have a default messaging system built right into the OS. So you're not going to have to download another application from the App Store in order to send text messages. So let's go ahead and open it up. And you're going to notice here that the layout looks very similar to the way it does on the iPhone, with the exception of these nice uh, sort of images of the contact right there. So I'm going to set up a conversation between my iPhone and my iPad. So let me just go ahead and send myself a text. And you're going to notice that it has appeared right here. And you'll see that with the iMessaging system, whenever you're uh, texting between an iOS device, you'll see that there uh, is a delivery confirmation right there. You'll also be able to see when the other person's typing. So I'm going to start typing. And you'll see that little icon right there. That shows that the other person or the person that you're uh, texting with is typing a message. And you'll see it appears right there. So those are some of the nice things with the iMessage system in iOS 5. Next, we're going to talk about changes to Safari by once again using the iPad. So let's open it up. So the first thing you're going to notice here is the ability to have multiple tabs. So if you select this icon here, you can uh, open up a tabbed browsing experience. So just type in a web page, like uh, just search for Amazon, bring that up there. And you can simply and easily switch between these two tabs. Uh, you'll also notice this feature called Reader here. So what this does is it gets rid of all the ads and just brings the text right in front of you. And it's a really nice reading experience. You can change the uh, size of the font. Uh, by selecting this and then choosing the bigger A to make it big or the smaller A to make the text smaller. Next we're going to talk about reading list. 
So with reading list, uh, what it allows you to do is just basically save something to read later. So let's say I didn't have time to read this. I can save it to my reading list, open up the reading list right here, and it will save all those web pages that I add right here so I can open them up later if I want to read them again. And lastly, I wanted to talk about that keyboard that I had right here. So this is the new sort of keyboard that you can open up in iOS 5. It makes it much easier to type with your thumbs, as you'll see here, because when you have the uh, standard keyboard, sorry about that, when you have the standard keyboard, it can be hard to reach to the middle keys right there. So you can open it up, or you can expand the keyboard by selecting this icon here, and then choosing Split, and it will split the keyboard for you. So those are the changes to Safari. So bringing back the iPhone, the next thing that we're going to talk about is Reminders. So you can open up Reminders here. It is a new default application that Apple has added in iOS 5. And what it allows you to do is simply remind yourself to do things. So if we want to add a new reminder, we can select this icon right here and just type in anything that you want and then press return. So with the reminder, you've got a couple options. You can have it remind you when you on a certain day. So it will add that to your calendar or you can have it remind you uh, when you arrive at a certain location. So let's say you want to remember to uh, do something when you get home, simply type it in here, add your home address, and it will remind you upon arriving at that location. So then when you're done with it, you can uh, check it to say that you're done uh, with that reminder, and then it will go into your completed list. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the new stand. So new stand is a new folder that Apple has added right onto your home screen in iOS 5. And what it does is it keeps track of all your newspaper and uh, magazine um, subscriptions that you have. So what it will do is it will put them right in here for you. And whatever a new publication is sent out, it will automatically be downloaded into this folder, which is really convenient. So that wraps it up for this video. This has just been a look at the more prominent features. If you want to check out all the tons of uh, minor features, there's also going to be a part two video. So do be sure to check that out. Uh, there will be a video annotation that you j can just click at the end of this video to get to that one. So thanks for taking the time to watch this, and I hope you guys enjoy iOS 5.